In case you haven't heard, the vehicle beside me is not the Infiniti G37. This is an Infiniti Sport Sedan, but a G37 it is not. It may have the same wheelbase, same base engine, and similar dimensions, but Infiniti has decided to rename all their vehicles. This now reads as the Q50. The Q50 is the first step in Infiniti's plan to rename all their vehicles. All cars will now be Qs and all crossovers and sport utilities will be QXs. Powering the Q50 is a choice of two engines. The base engine is the familiar 3.7 liter V6 producing 328 horsepower and 269 pound-feet of torque. The exact same numbers as found in the 2013 G37. The Q50 is also available with a hybrid powertrain that develops a combined 360 horsepower thanks to a 3.5 liter V6 and electric motor. The only transmission available for either engine is a 7-speed automatic, but both regular and hybrid Q50s can be had with all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. Expect the Q50 to achieve 20 miles per gallon city and 30 miles per gallon highway for rear-wheel drive 3.7 liter V6 models and 29 miles per gallon city and 36 miles per gallon highway for rear-wheel drive hybrid models. The Q50 3.7 will begin at $36,700 with the top of the line Q50S hybrid all-wheel drive beginning at $48,150. Being a proper luxury car, the Q50 is available in 10 trims with there being 8 additional option packages. Borrowing heavily from the Infiniti Essence concept, the Q50 has what Infiniti calls a double arch front grille as well as LED headlights and LED daytime running lights. Now they say it looks like a human face, but I, I just don't see it. The new shape is incredibly aerodynamic with a coefficient of drag of just 0.26 and zero lift front and rear. More importantly though, the new Q50 looks stunning. Just look at that beauty. Inside, the Q50 features Infiniti's Intuition. Now what this means is all customizable settings for both driver and vehicle are saved via the key. Switch keys and the settings change automatically. The sound system in this car is fantastic. Bose has installed 10 speakers which includes a subwoofer in each of the front doors and one in the back parcel shelf. Thankfully, most of the hard buttons remain in the center console, so if you're like me and prefer it over a touchscreen system, it's easy to navigate. Infinity has also shrunk down the A pillars and B pillars in this vehicle compared to the outgoing G37 sedan. This allows passengers an easier entry and exit to this vehicle. In the back, the Q50 easily accommodates an adult passenger, but comfort is just merely adequate. The trunk in the regular sedan is 13.5 cubic feet, while the hybrid loses some to its batteries and shrinks down to 9.4 cubic feet. With the curb weight similar to that of the G37 sedan, expect straight line performance from the 3.7 liter V6 to be very similar. Of course, Infiniti is quick to point out that three-time world champion Formula One driver Sebastian Vettel had a hand in tuning this vehicle. Probably a small hand, but he had a hand. Many of the driving aspects of this vehicle are customizable. You can pick how much throttle response you want, where the shift points are, and the steering feel. A conventional rack and pinion power assist system is standard in the Q50, but you can upgrade to Infiniti's direct adaptive steering. Now this system has no physical connection between the steering wheel and the front wheels when powered. The goal behind it is Infiniti says the steering inputs will relate quicker to the steering wheel than a conventional mechanical system. Now I was very skeptical of the system, as most are, because how can something so artificial work? But you know what, it does. You can adjust the effort on three levels as well as the turner response on three levels and find the one that's just right for you. I found the stiffest setting with the quickest turn in actually provided really good response and okay steering feel. Of course this vehicle comes with all the latest in safety technology, which includes active lane control. Now this uses cameras to keep the Q50 in its lane and takes usual lane departure one step further and it works almost too well. On the freeway, the vehicle will stay in its lane through easy to moderate corners even if your hands aren't on the steering wheel. 
Now, I don't suggest you do that, but when you combine the adaptive cruise control system, interstate driving is almost effortless in this vehicle. It is important the driver always pays attention though, because you never know what could happen. We're now driving the Infiniti Q50 Hybrid, and although power is higher, you don't really feel it when you first get off the line. There's sort of a delay in power until the gasoline engine kicks on and helps the electric motor. Like its gasoline counterpart, the Infiniti Q50 S Hybrid has the sport suspension and the lower profile wider tires. Grip in the corners is very good, and I'd say it's on par with the BMW 335i. In this mostly highway run, I'm noticing a 4 to 5 miles per gallon improvement on the hybrid over the regular Q50. So the technology does work, and it gives you more power. The Q50 will arrive in showroom shortly to battle the segment heavyweights like the BMW 3 Series and the Mercedes-Benz C-Class. As well, it will have to go up against some bright newcomers like the Cadillac ATS and the Lexus IS. By changing the vehicle's name, this car is now behind the 8-ball, and Infiniti must convince consumers that Q50 stands for Compact Sport Luxury. Now, at least the shape is somewhat familiar, and there is new technology, improved performance, and a hybrid option. That is a lot going for the Q50, but the only question that will remain is, will consumers respond? For more on this review and others like it, visit autoguide.com.